24th day of 2023. We have a new guest in the studio for a new conversation. We want to talk about illicit trade in Kenya. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, illicit trade in Kenya. And our guest is the CEO of the Kenya Association of Manufacturers, Anthony Mwangi. We welcome him the way we welcome our guests, CT. Yes, our proverb for the whole of this week comes from the country of Angola. Mm-hmm. It is the destiny of the donkey to carry a heavy burden. It is the destiny of the donkey to carry a heavy burden. Yes, we, if we're going to discuss illicit trade, mm-hmm. uh, there are consequences to it. Yeah. And I think the economic consequences, uh, unfortunately, mm. will fall on the already burdened shoulders of the donkey. Yes, who in this case is the Kenyan Monange. Mm. Yes. Basically, what I'm hearing is even if the donkey hires the best advocate to go and talk about, oh, you know, this burden is too heavy. It's still your destiny to carry the thing. It's your destiny, man. Even if the donkey and all their ilk form a political party, and even hold an election and re- reject the legitimacy of the yes, heavy burden and, uh, and even get a new constitution <laughs> 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 somehow <coughs> the very 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 purpose of their lot mm. will not seem to change they will still be it's like that's why this proverb is pertinent it looks like it's the destiny and you're wondering but must it be their must, destiny must it be really really can it be questioned yes that's actually good morning Good morning, Eric. Welcome to Kenya's Biggest Conversation. Thank you very much. The hot seat of the situation room. That proverb, what's your interpretation of it? I think, um, you know, uh, the proverb manifests itself, you know, Mm. every day for the donkey. Mm. It doesn't have to be (laughs) that way (laughs) because uh, that heavy burden sometimes is the abuse of, you know, uh, animal rights. Mm. Uh, Perhaps it doesn't have to be that heavy. Uh, And for the subject of what you're talking about is that the citizens are the victims of illicit trade Mm. with heavy, heavy uh, consequences on their public health uh, and safety. Yeah. So what, that's why this conversation is extremely important for us to have. It's a big one. Yes. It's a big one. Anthony, you've been at the helm of uh, Kenya Association of Manufacturers now since August. September. Right? September. Mid, yes. So since September, uh, you know, f- for a long time, we knew the previous CEOs of come, the, the former CS, Betty Maina, and then Phyllis Wakiaga, and now comes in Anthony. Who's Anthony? Uh, so, Anthony has been around for quite some time, uh, have a career spanning almost 20 years. Uh, I have uh, worked for many companies in Kenya, uh, starting with selling photocopiers in, on the streets of Nairobi, moved on to uh, Samsung Electronics, uh, then after some time moved on to Kenya Airways. That's why I started my public policy uh, uh, life mm-hmm. or career. And I did that for seven years. Uh, then I moved on to IBM uh, for three years. Uh, 2016, I joined Talo as the director in charge of government affairs, public policy, communication. So all the trucks that you saw rolling the road, you know, mm-hmm. down the road to Mombasa taking oil. The dream was to make Kenya an oil producing country, which yep. we did, mm-hmm. albeit in you know, small quantities. Uh, and then I uh, moved on to Bolt uh, as a head of public policy for East Africa. And now come. So I've been around for, for some time. So your journey now my, is in public policy. Yes, I've mm. kept my lane mm. uh, for the last 15 plus years. <laughs> That's public policy. Yes. <laughs> what is public policy? Yes. Very good question. When I was doing my master's in public policy at uh, Strathmore, we spent a lot of time, almost two years, trying to define uh, public policy. So there's no single definition of public policy, but mm-hmm. the uh, the general uh, you know definition of public policy is any rule, any act, any re- legislation, regulation uh, that call on public you know resources that affect public uh, that can be defined broadly as mm-hmm. part of public policy. Mm-hmm. Yes. Now the Kenya Association of Manufacturers is a business membership organization brings in manufacturers from various sectors to come together into this one to be its industry voice 
to be its advocate to lobby for better policy and a better working environment and better markets and, hum and creation of markets okay so the assumption here is the members of the kenya association of manufacturers actually produce goods locally yes. or they do value addition yes. of goods locally and then they take those goods to the market now that is all presumably legitimate trade governed by government paying the regular taxes and all what is then illicit trade illicit trade um is is, is very broad right and it is the trade that is uh, prohibited contravenes circumvents the, the the rules the law the taxation regimes the border controls so it is very wide right mm. and there are quite a number of them broadly speaking uh, illicit trade involves you know counterfeiting uh, smuggling a sale of small arms and weapons and i think also cattle wrestling is is part of illicit trade <laughs> <laughs> and we need to look at illicit trade in that lens mm -hmm. because here you're dealing with stolen cattle and here you're dealing with uh, counterfeiting is you're dealing with uh, intellectual property right mm. which is ostensibly supposed to be protected by the constitution because if you look at section 40 of the constitution protection of property rights mm. which is a basic function of any government mm. and then you go to subsection five where it is specifically talks about protection of intellectual property rights yeah. in any form for kenyans so right from the constitution and all the agencies that have been established to protect both property physical property and ip that is intellectual property and 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 you look at anti counterfeit you know uh, act of 20 uh, 2008 you look at uh, anti counterfeit authority you look at kenya bureau of standard you look at kefis you look at admo act kws you know national police service all those agencies are supposed to protect the property which now is includes the property right mm -hmm. right has it been very successful no, because illicit trade and the biggest form of illicit trade in our perspectives is counterfeiting. Mm -hmm. This is where uh, you deal uh, with, uh, you know, legitimate trademarks uh, and, and, and you use that either producing uh, or transporting or repacking or selling uh, without the authority of the IP owner. Okay. Right. Is that, as I said, it's the same as uh, selling a cow that doesn't belong to you. To you. To you. I mm. mean, and now is that a uh, counterfeit cow? Uh, that's a. It's, the trade itself is counterfeit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's smuggling. You know. <laughs> so I mean, obviously, we, yeah. even as you define it, it's a yeah. trade and it's bad stuff, right? Um. So who's responsible? whether domiciled or internationally, because oftentimes when we hear international, when we hear illicit trade, it's almost as though it has an international skew that we have people crossing the borders and behaving in a manner untoward, right? But obviously, from your definitions, um, that can happen locally. This illicit trade can also be domiciled. Who then are the vanguards of the peace, as it were, when it comes to illicit trade? First of all, um, counterfeiting. 80% of counterfeited products are imported products. Mm -hmm. And it's good to just break down some of those products and the impact that they have on public safety. Mm -hmm. If you go to buy spare parts, there are a lot of fake counterfeited spare parts, including brake pads. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we are in a very unique country because when an accident happens, nobody does the investigation to exactly what caused the accident other than blame the driver who is probably dead. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But some of those challenges emanate from the products that uh, the brake parts that are used in those cars. Some of them are compressed glass. Right? You can actually that brake pad you can tip off with your, with your mm -hmm. finger. Mm. The normal person on the street and preparing doesn't know whether that is you know, fake. Look at pharmaceutical products. Mm. 
emergency pills, uh, contraceptive pills, uh, you know, drugs, ARVs, you know, high blood pressure drugs, all the drugs that are fast moving. Mm. And, and just to step back, counterfeited products are mostly targeted at the fast moving you know, uh, uh, consumer goods, including medicine. Mm. Now, if you have a population that is consuming fake medicine on some of these life threatening ailments, the toll on the individuals and, and, and the public health mm. and the economy is enormous. You go to things like alcoholic drinks. People are consuming poison. Right. It's not the first time that you've had people dying in the country because of or losing their eyesight. And those are ultimate the people who pay ultimate price. But there are so many people that are chipped off every day. Their lives are wasting away every day because they continue consuming these illicit, counterfeited alcoholic drinks. But then coming to your, to your question, and there are many. The first to disabuse the notion mm. that the people who conduct this trade are the people we know from political circles uh, being told that you know they are being affected by this trade. Illicit trade, the origin of these are transnational organized crimes and criminals. Because no Kenyan has a production line to do fake medicine. Is a, and there is a very close nexus that 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 exists, mm. and OECD actually has mentioned between the proceeds of illicit narcotics trade and funding counterfeit uh, counterfeiting you know, of goods, mm. because that's how you introduce that illicit gotten money into legitimate financial systems. Mm. In other words cleaning money wash 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 wash, wash. wash. Mm. right right and then the transportation systems that are used to transport these counterfeited products are the same transport systems used to traffic human beings uh you know wildlife uh and narcotics mm. and firearms so this is a well-organized drug it net is, we are yes. not talking about your run-of-the-mill guy who's doing He's something here is a victim. The guy on the, the, guy the on street, the street on, on the beat. Is a victim. Right. Yeah. So this is some this this these are yeah. people high up in the echelons yeah. of this kind of thing that we are talking about. So then going back to that question in terms of then who's supposed to essentially round up the bad guys, it would then be a difficult thing because that means that those who are running this thing are very, very powerful. They have become extremely powerful because they have been led to be powerful and like cut wrestling it started a small you know uh, crime mm. but now you know it is a big problem mm. you know <laughs> it's a big problem i mean if you look at the definition of a state and you look at one of the definitions actually a monopoly of violence mm. Do you think that the Kenyan state has a monopoly of violence over Kataraslas? It has sufficient ample opposition. You see, <laughs> it has a strong opposition mm. because you have to let it. If you look at even the terrorism and what happened in, uh, in Somalia and you find uh, that uh, this, uh, you know, Al-Shabaab allowed to trade in charcoal, then they gain economic muscle mm. and they're then able to provide Finance. good opposition mm. to the Kenyan nation state, you know, and others. Mm. So this illicit trade also is a big, big problem. And if left unchecked, it must all start driving, I call it the good, the bad driving out the good. Mm. But then you look at who, as you asked, who is mm. supposed to fight this? Mm. As I mentioned before, there are many agencies, because these are constitutional issue, many agencies that actually are supposed to legitimately this. ACA, uh, that is Anti-Counterfeit Authority, mm -hmm. uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, as the people who are, some, are created by the Anti-Counterfeit Act, mm -hmm. but they don't, they're not alone. I mean, the National Police Service, yeah. uh, uh, KWS, fighting, you know, trade in, 
in 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 wildlife you know uh, 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 goods mm -hmm. you look at uh, cabs uh, you look at uh, you know all the agencies that operate at the port at the airports uh, cafes even plants and fauna flora yeah. flora mm -hmm. so there it's 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 actually a galaxy mm -hmm. of of very institutions. Many, the institutions that should be doing this yes mm -hmm. and i think that is how the uh, former regime created a multi agency uh, task force mm -hmm. so that then they can coordinate because the more mm -hmm. they don't work in a coordinated manner that's how the trade flourishes mm -hmm. uh, do th are these people known just like any organized crime mm. Uh, perhaps there are people, uh, and I've, I would imagine uh, the law enforcement agencies uh, perhaps know some of them, but I would imagine uh, most of these because the international criminals are unknown. Unknown? To, to us, yes. So they're known to someone? They are known to someone. Uh, I don't know who that someone is, but they need to be, to be investigated and need to be known. Mm -hmm. But a lot of it they're emanating from international you know, circles. Hmm. You don't need to talk of counterfeit goods. I'm just thinking of consumer products where something is labeled as such and it isn't quite what it's labeled as because probably there's a brand name attached to it and it isn't really the brand. And I'm looking at what makes these things attractive, cost. Yes. How then you head an organization that is an association of manufacturers? How then does the local industry counter the infiltration of maybe the very, very same goods that they would supply locally. And yet, what we're referring to as counterfeit will come in cheaper. It may not necessarily serve the purpose that they promise it will serve, but on the face of it, it is cheap. Mm -hmm. Like some of these things that come from the Far East, cheap clothing, cheap shoes. The shoe will last you a week, but it is cheap. Cheap mm -hmm. medicine. I mean, just to add on to that, mm -hmm. CT, mm -hmm. just a few... Uh, no, actually, it's not even years. Last year, there was this whole hoo-ha about this new supposed herbal contraceptive that then had indications of you growing, you know, whatever in the future. But it was mm. cheap. Number one, it was cheap and it was readily available to women across the country. We're not just talking about Nairobi, who would be able to get contraception in for shillings. Mm. So there it is. It comes in. And then we'd seen studies afterward that, so you know... It's meeting a need. It's meeting a need, number yes, one. Yes, and the need it's is immediate. The cost, and it's mm. an immediate need. It's, it's cost-effective. Nobody's giving any information to counter that it would work. Yes. But there's a, there's a challenge to that mm. notion. Mm. They are not meeting the need. They are sold as goods to meet that need. If you take, for instance... I mean, not you. If you know why Kenyans, not, are, uh, why, Kenyans, why, are, why not me? You know, <laughs> I, I would imagine you'll be, you'll be, you'll be looking at you know, and and sometimes you cannot even differentiate uh, between but, real and fake. Yes. Mm. So so if you take fake medicine, it doesn't meet the need. It gives you a false hope. Yes. So it is the role of the state and government to protect. The citizens, but you see, the need that we're talking about mm -hmm. is not necessarily that it will m meet the ultimate need. No. You are looking no. for medicine; you want to be healed. Right. It is filling a certain gap. One accessibility. That it's here, it's available, it's, it's accessible, because the others are not mm -hmm. available and accessible. So it's in the market. It's where I need it to be. And if the others, and are number two, mm -hmm. it is affordable. Yes. It's where I need it's within my reach and it's within my affordability. So it's meeting those two needs. Those two are also needs. You see and if it's packaged yeah. that it's going to address yeah. my ultimate yeah. need for why I'm looking for medicine and I don't know any better, then that's see, what I'm gonna go for. There's always a promise of what it it seeks to do, but if you mm. take the argument even to the hab human habitation, okay? If you look at some of the structures that people live in and you look at the demands and the standards that are set by the UN as to what qualifies to be human yeah. habitation. Even an animal that you keep that you don't particularly like would n should not be allowed to live in some of those uh, structures. Mm -hmm. And yet, we claim that it is habitation and people even pay rent to live mm -hmm. in, the, in mm -hmm. some of those things. Mm -hmm. Again, it meets the need. It, these people are victims. 
Yes. You know, mm-hmm. and, 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 you know, it's not universal that everybody has to live like that. True. It's because of the failure of successful governments to lift people out of poverty. Mm-hmm. People don't need to live in the way we live. Yep. You know, people don't need to take uh, substandard goods because a lot of majority of the counterfeited goods are substandard goods mm. take an example of things like diapers you know mm. and and imported and, and and you know they're worn by children mm. and then they ban the children you know yeah i mean yes you can say it's it's it meets the because of cost but this is just people taking advantage of the situation mm-hmm. And that's what we're saying, that it needs to be controlled, it needs to be eliminated, because it chips away and continues to position itself as a legitimate product, but it's not, Mm. you know. Mm. So in the long run, is that you're going to have a big challenge in future. If you, if you, for instance, you're dealing with maize that uh, has full of aflatoxin, would you say it's meeting the need? It's meeting the need for that day, but what that happens a few years down the line? I mean, it's we remember Dr. Mangeli, late Mangeli, mm. telling us that you're going to have a big, big problem in future yes. because of consumption of this illicit things. Mm. So it is the, res- the you know the responsibility of the state and the government to protect the citizen and raise the living standard I think of that citizen. Yeah. There's a question I want to follow yeah. up because yeah. City had asked you. As the Kenya Association of yeah, Manufacturers, yeah. what is it that uh, is hindering your members from meeting this need that this person is going for? They are comparing very many things. One, they are comparing, is this cup available in my locality? No, it isn't. Is the fake one available? Yes, it is. So why is it the, <laughs> the original one available? <laughs> is this one cheaper than the original one? The fake one is cheaper. All those things. What is it that? What are the factors that hinder the manufacturers from being able to provide this? So, first of all, you know uh, the reason it's being counterfeited is because it is moving. Yes, you know, they don't counterfeit anything. That they don't invent uh, anything new. They go to the market and see what is being sold, and then I'll give you an example bottle of water yeah if you look at the cost of the bottle of water the cost of the bottle mm. you look at the cost of this label yeah you look at the cost of the excise mm. you look at the cost of compliance to cabs yeah all those costs will go to the cost of the bottle of water yes, yeah. yes. and because you're a legitimate manufacturer mm. and you're following the rules you'll incorporate all that but there's somebody who goes to the kitchen, fills this bottle of water, right? Mm. Just looks for the label, put the label, label as a legitimate manufacturer. But this water has not gone through any process, no licensing, no taxation. Excise stamp alone, per liter, is six shillings and 40 cents. And you find, you go to the market and find that water being sold at 10 bob. <laughs> <laughs> so... If, so how can you, as a legitimate manufacturer, <laughs> who is paying taxes, you know, and following mm. the rules, compete such a, you know, a, a product? Yeah. That goes for any other product. You know, first of all, manufacturing in this country is a, is a, such a big challenge. And, and, and it's only that people push themselves. Otherwise, if there was an alternative, I don't think people will do that because mm. it's actually too difficult mm. for you to manufacture, for you to comply. You know, uh, with all these rules, it takes an average Kenyan who wants to follow the law two years to set up behind the you know water bottling, water com- bottling company. It'll take two years. Two years, and you already have My water. My family has done that. Two years. It took us two years, and we say. And this is just going through the regulation the processes. Process. You start with NEMA. Right. You start with the county. You go to Warma, it takes you water another. resource authority. Mm. You go to Kebs, you go to Kerry. You go to everybody. Everybody. Mm. Now, so the question I think should be coming is why is this trade becoming prevalent? Yep. It's because also the cost of compliance, the, the authorities' overreach, overlaps. They make it so difficult 
for people to do business and yet mm. they ought you know, to be making it easier make easier. it easier that is the role of government to mm. make it easier mm. for citizens to invest in their own country if it's going to take you two years you know how long does it how long does it take anybody who is setting a manufacturing to get a connection with, uh, with, with, with Kenya power, Kenya power? <laughs> you know you know so 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 this country <laughs> even though so they really offer to do your own substation so maybe this illicit trade it looks as though it's being encouraged yeah. because if you were to go the formal way i mean you get a headache mm. yeah. you get a headache and try two years to set up a business so my goodness cut corners and get to the markets yeah. and that's where the role now but you see now of, that, of your yeah. fellows in the profession yes. public yes. policy yes also then comes in yes. let's discuss that after the break yes. this is the situation room the only way to start your day. I think, actually, just give us the distinction between the fake counterfeits and grey products. Counterfeit. Uh, so, 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 I think there's the, the terms. It's just nomenclature, you know. So it's uh, one and the same uh, thing. But I think the best way to describe a counterfeit product is just as simple as it's fake. Right, uh, not from the legitimate uh, producer. It is mostly substandard. Okay, not from legitimate producer, mm -hmm. but it is done so well that it you you it kind of passes as the legitimate product. Okay, uh, and uh, you know people spend companies spend a lot of time, you know, developing the brand, uh, creating the 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 market for that brand. You know, you know like you mentioned about minute maid you know mm. they've spent a lot of time if it was our own individual you know uh you know brands you you, you have taken years mm. uh, to build your brand mm. so if they were unable to counterfeit uh, a human being i'm sure there'll be a lot of fake eric Lat uh, eric <laughs> 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 so, and, and, you know everyone they've tried the, the, the ambassador have tried yes you know? yeah so it's purely fake from the get-go yes and you say um, that there's a lot of, from, from where you come from as manufacturers, you feel that sometimes government policy actually abates counterfeits and works to the disadvantage of the genuine manufacturer yeah. because of the entire cost of, yeah. of compliance. Yes. The cost of compliance in terms of time and in terms of money. Cost. What is it that needs to be done? So let's just look at the bigger picture about the uh, this valley so the baseline survey that was done by a multi-agency task led by aca that's anti counterfeit agency our authority they discovered that in 2017 the value of counterfeit goods was 726 billion in the kenyan market in the kenyan market what 2018, it grew to 830 billion, 14% increase. If you look at where we are today, we are talking about over a trillion shillings. Mm. Now, because these are substandard and illicit goods that are mostly smuggled into the country, mm. no duty is paid. So, Kenya government could be losing in upwards of 250 billion shillings a year. Mm -hmm. In revenue. Now, when that happens, they can't raise enough revenue. They go back to the same people who are doing legitimate trade tax uh, to tax more. Mm -hmm. And what then ha happens is that the legitimate people, traders and manufacturers who are doing the actual work of investing, and creating jobs start losing their market share to fake products. Mm. And we have estimated as KM that some manufacturers lose or some industry lose up to 40% of their market share to counterfeiters. Now, if you go to the factories here in town, uh, in, in Nairobi, in, in Kenya, mm. almost all of them are operating 50% capacity. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? That you have installed uh, uh, capacity to produce 24 hours, but you're only working for 12 hours. Yep. 
that compromises even the number of people that you employ. Yep. Right now, we're employing, uh, the manufacturers are employing almost 380, 50, 70,000 people at 50%. Now, if you promote legitimate trade, if you promote uh, rule of law, we are not asking for anything else. Mm. It's a constitutional issue. Is a legal issue. It is that the government and the agencies in government to perform their role to protect, you know, rule of law. Right? Yeah. If this happens over time, you'll last start seeing people getting off work and companies closing. It's it's not unusual to hear that companies are relocating from from Kenya. There is no investor who mm. will come here and create a product and then uh, is counterfeited the following day. Mm. If you look at the copyright, what you call piracy, and I think musicians have been able to, because you're the same thing, you know, yep. we are talking about IP, mm -hmm. yeah. they're talking about copyright. Yep. So counterfeit, the sibling on the other side of copyright is, is piracy. Mm. Yeah. You, know, you, know, you know, trade in, 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 in you know, your creativity. Yeah. So, and you need to allow people to be creative. So allowing illicit trade to flourish only benefits a few people at the expense of millions of Kenyans. So but what is the issue here? Sorry, Andrew, go, yeah. ahead. go ahead. But isn't that the problem? Yeah. That's exactly the issue. And it, 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 it's, it's not minded that a few people actually are benefiting yeah. from this at the expense of yeah. millions of people. But that's the point, that there are folks who are into this business for their self-benefit um, it doesn't matter that there are other people who face, you know, the consequences of, you know, ingesting or buying or using these products. So we can sit here and moralize it because we obviously know that there is an issue here. But for them, the commercial advantage far outweighs any kind of moral discussion that we are going to have. And isn't that just it? How then do we go about convincing such beyond prosec aside prosecution? Because you're not going to have a conversation about it's right or wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the, only, the only thing they're going to pay attention to is suffering the dam suffering from the consequences of putting this damage on other people. Which is why I asked then who is tasked with making sure that those who are involved in this business are brought to book. Because it's criminal. It's criminal. You cannot tell me that you manufacture products which after years of use by another individual is going to cause them some kind of harm or death. For example... And then this person should continue to share the same space and air as everybody else. <laughs> I, I mean, that's the only language for me that they would understand. Air should be snuffed out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Because we can't have a conversation. No, you know, actually what you're doing is wrong. Mm. We can see that you're making trillions of dollars from it. But can we have a conversation about how you can stop? At that's least not you're the hiring that, some people. Yeah. That's not the language that they will understand. Because it's commercial for yeah. them completely. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, it is about tightening the screws yeah. around uh, prosecution. Yes. I, hear, yes. I hear something different though. Yeah. We have all these agencies that have been created and they're doing their work. But at the end of the day, what is making the counterfeiter thrive is because he's able to come into the market faster, cheaper. I think one of the ways not, of doing it, it's not, if, yeah. if, if the government looked at its own regime, first of all, ease of doing business how fast do you uh, register a new company how fast do you register ip how fast do you recognize that ip how then look at uh, the cost of doing business. how many taxes am i levying on this one product or this one manufacturer even the tax of just transporting goods from the manufacturing plant to the market as long as you're crossing one county into another you're paying yeah. as long as you're costing from one county to another you're paying for just branding your vehicle and branding your vehicle is helping you to get your market here. If the government then looked at all those things and said, I'm going to make it easier for Anthony to be able to package water and sell, then at least you have a leg up in countering the counterfeit. And then out also gives the anti-counterfeit authority, the NEMA, the whatever, all these other agencies, the multi-agency, better work of dealing with the counterfeiters. Yep. Yeah. As they say, mm. you cannot eliminate crime. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, crime and society are intertwined. The only thing that you do is to minimize the opportunity. So, and one way, as you've described, it is make it easier for people to do business, legitimate business. Mm. 
ease and cost of doing business in this country is extremely high right mm. so it's a contributing factor but be it as it may you do not leave it there because there are also agencies that recognize there could be shortcomings in how you is of in cost of doing business which needs to be reformed actually mm. like yesterday but then if that happens you still have to look at how to enforce, enforce. the rule of law okay you have to go to a marketplace mm. and you just tell people these are the rules you play by them everybody but now you have individuals and you see crime is is very interesting and look at narcotics i mean look at states like you know mexico and other places that allowed some of these things to thrive it got to a point where you subvert completely the rule of law yeah and those criminals were able to face the military in 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 broad day you know uh war mm. on the streets of, of mexico so it is very easy for someone who is doing illegitimate business to infiltrate the law enforcement to infiltrate the systems that are supposed to uh you know uh create order mm. you know uh, and also in fact even plant people within look at the port of umbasa have you ever asked yourselves why uh, goods have to come through uh, eldoret and come to nairobi mm. <laughs> mm. you know you know the the picture you paint of mexico is a daunting one many latin american countries have that same problem but our situation is different in this sense see we are talking about criminals infiltrating systems here everybody seems to be colluding because the very forces that are supposed to fight the criminals are criminals okay the very people who are supposed to oversight these things are criminals that's the problem <laughs> the very people in government who are supposed to ensure that there's protection are criminals because we have legitimized and we have said it is okay for people to appear from absolutely nowhere and suddenly become rich overnight and it is okay so even when we talk about this enterprise a country like ours grapples with something quite different because this thing it, it isn't a question of a habit that we acquired this thing is in our blood stream now mm. it, it's something we've mainstreamed it we've considered it normal and so even when you talk legitimate see at the end of the day a business person wants to make money but what they forget is an institution such as the one you had also produce value because if the intentions were serious in my opinion everything that the Kenyan government could do to ensure they protect their manufacturers so that they can grow would be done i do not see that being done because if they did that then the Kenyan product whatever your members produce would compete favorably globally yes and the economy that we are talking about would actually grow but mm -hmm. it doesn't now that is down the quagmire we find ourselves in because it is either we grow legitimate business by being globally competitive mm -hmm. and we have many opportunities if i just showed you you know and we've done this mapping of all the sectors and we looked at the opportunity mm. we can actually grow this country but then we have all these headwinds and all these challenges of the costs ease and illicit trade so the business that's supposed to grow a manufacturing base start small as an SME grow to a big company grow pan africa east africa pan afric and also perhaps go internationally they cannot drive because the moment their products becomes popular the mukoras come in mm. you know and then you kill the company mm. so if this is not done rule of law uh, and control the illicit trade and allow legitimate business to grow we are going to be in the same hole we have been for the last how many years mm. decades many you know look at the challenge that you're facing on employment and sometimes we don't contextualize these issues how many kids did their kcp the other day how many did their uh, kcse mm. every year 
we have millions of Kenyans joining the job market. Yeah. Whether they drop off at class one mm. or grade two or class eight, mm. they're joining the job market. Yep. University. Now, if you go back 10 years and assume 10 million people have joined the job market, but how many jobs are being generated? The illicit trade is almost 10% of the GDP. And we talk about manufacturing contribution to GDP. Mm. Illicit trade is actually an extraction to GDP. So mm. we're extracting 1 trillion shillings worth every year. The only person who benefits is the person seated in some capital in Far East, mm. you know. But it in still contributes to then essentially what a nation would count as GDP. But that's not a contribution. And let's use the same example used at the, about cattle wrestling. A cattle wrestler's addition to the GDP. Of who? <laughs> of who? <laughs> you know, just Who's because GDP they sell because, because they, they sell cows. They, they sell cows yeah. to mm. you know they, they steal cows and sell. Mm. Uh, but do they contribute or they extract? Because the people who actually uh, the people who've you know, produced the produce animal those, up those, to that those. level. So yeah. Because this is the thing that we're yeah. saying essentially yeah. that a nation could actually do better. If we're talking about a trillion yeah. a shillings, a, a trillion shillings that has been extracted yeah. due to illicit trade, apply a trillion shillings, for example, yeah. to Kenya's economy yeah. today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what would you then be able to and I think that is the lens through which yeah. we ought to be yeah. looking at this yeah. thing. Yeah. That oftentimes you say, okay, until you look at the demerits of something, you will not know how it is effect mm -hmm. affecting you. Mm -hmm. Or if you look at the merits of actually having this thing, imagine a trillion shillings being pumped into Kenya today and what you would then be able to achieve. Is that not enough in terms of impetus to get those who are responsible for streamlining these things to say, okay, guys, let's get this thing moving and see how we can shut down these taps? And that's why our work as Kenya Association Manufacturers, mm. we advocate for this and we continue advocating for I mean, we have limited, you know, tools to really deal with that. We only advocate for, for the law enforcement agencies. And it's not necessary for, 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 for us. Yeah. It's, it's, it's actually for the citizens of the country. It's, it's for the entire yeah. country and the entire If economy. we cannot be a producing country and resort, everybody go back to trading. You're not producing anything. Mm -hmm. How many people are going to really, what, what is the future of the country that does not produce only trades on itself? Actually, you know, the... That roadmap is a clear one because every nation we refer to as developed, it's through industry that yes. they got to where they, yes. they actually yes. got to. It, it, it's, yes. it's not something that is a secret. Yes. And yet you will find that alongside that is the national pride that these countries have mm -hmm. with that particular industry of theirs yeah. Yeah. because they themselves support that very industry. I look at a country like India or mm -hmm. China, just given their populations, you know, they don't really need to trade with other people outside their own country to actually make money. No. You have a ready market in your country. Organic. Yes, now, market, now yes. we have a market as well. So our market, we have about, today about 5,000 manufacturers for about 48, 51, 52 million people. Mm. Yes. We are now more and swimming in a smaller pool called Kenya. Mm. We have opportunities across East Africa. Yeah. We have opportunities across Africa. 1.2 billion people. Africa, and this is really sad, the intra Africa trade is only 11% of intra Africa trade. So, uh, so essentially, so 89% uh, 90, of 90, trade 90, in Africa 90, comes 89 in. comes from outside Africa. Right. Mm. Now, within East Africa, and we're one of the most organized, uh, you know, uh, community, perhaps. Uh, almost like EU, mm. but our intra East Africa trade is 18%. 19%. Within, EU is within 70. East Africa? Yeah. Within the 300 million yes. market. Yes. Now, look at that in the context of, again, a trillion shillings that we're talking about, illicit trade. Because illicit trade is the same thing happening in Uganda, Tanzania. Burundi, and you yes. come on those things here, they go through uh, Tanzania, they, they, they come back to Kenya. I mean, it's not once we've talked about things, uh, you know, uh, products being loaded from Port of Mombasa, then uh, they are uh, rerouted back to the country. Mm. Duty contraband free. duty free yes contraband <laughs> smuggling you know so <laughs> you know economies <laughs> that are based on this kind of weak system 
the actually uh, the future is really really bleak for for for, for us because uh, just imagine you know uh, you know where have you been and if we continue on this trajectory for, mm. for how long it's just, it's like a cookie that will come to crack so Anthony the people who are in charge of policy in government yes, yes. there's an all institu- institution for policy there are those who advise the government there are those who make decisions in government in cabinet policy they understand these things i mean manufacturers and others have talked to government for very many years they are those who even sponsored their people to get into government so why doesn't it change the question and 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 is a role for all of us and we're not apportioning blame here i mean mm. i know there are many good policy makers within the systems yeah. but i continue to call it the bad driving out the good if today you walk into a you know a village meeting and tell people you are the ceo you you can get people jobs you know from your village because you're looking at qualifications mm. you think you're going to be popular you know <laughs> in that conversation <laughs> you know you say no you know it has to be merits mm. you know you have to go to school yeah. you have to make sure that you you're better than everybody so else you got your earn your you have to, your ethics have to be a one that's not a very popular conversation and yeah. that's why i call the bad driving out the good mm. you know and that's what is happening in kenya the moment you allow illicit trade you continuously drive out the good so even messaging yes even messaging yes. so for instance if the kenya revenue authority is clamping down on those who may be trying to evade tax in one way or the other uh, fake stamps and such then that messaging is strong on the government is serious on fighting counterfeit now if the kra then backtracks on that then the converse also happens that well <laughs> It's free market bwana why am i making stamps when i can just you know be in yeah, the right political yeah, side yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. so the argument you know people <laughs> say oh say oh you know uh, other countries you know develop by faking you know but those countries even if they develop they faked in their own country mm-hmm. they had manufacturing of fake products in their soil mm-hmm. they were manufacturing yes, <laughs> yes our manufacturing, <laughs> manufacturing is 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 our fakes is, are external yeah, yeah external that's mean what fake i mean so you that argument is fronted a lot in pol- public policy discourse yeah and, and 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 that is driving out the legitimate conversation of saying Yes, but you can see the but effects. You can today. see the effects. You can see the effects today even for those countries. Anthony. Yes. We will invite you again. Thank you. Thank you for visiting us this morning. Come again and again. Let's keep talking about this yeah. matters and all we need to see our country develop. Thank you. Anthony Mwangi is the CEO of the Kenya Association of Manufacturers. He'll be here again and again and again. We'll